All right. Come on, right in. Get right, get right. Amen, amen, amen. How funny. <coughs> Excuse me. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. Praise God and welcome. Good morning. Praise God and welcome to you and to everyone as you join this morning. Go ahead and share this with somebody. Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome. Go ahead and share this. Like and share because we know the word of God is good. Amen. Amen. And, and share this with someone else so people can join us live. Amen. We are a live program for a reason. Praise God. Amen. We'll talk about that one day. Amen. Amen. Everybody go ahead and like and share, follow and share, whatever you need to do and share. <laughs> Amen. Praise God this morning. What a mighty God we serve. Isn't he an awesome God? I love Jesus this morning and every morning, but you know, <laughs> amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome Facebook, welcome Periscope, welcome you Insta Instagram, welcome you stream, welcome Roku, praise God, welcome everybody. What a friend, what a friend, what a friend, amen. God is good and worthy to be praised. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all that he's done for me. <laughs> My soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. I told you I grew up apostolic, right? In the Pentecostal church. So you just, there's songs that you just know. <laughs> and it's amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now, God never said I could sing on cue. I don't know why. But <laughs> on key, it's just. Amen, amen, amen. I thank God for saving me. And that's the song that leads up to something else, that leads to something else. And then all of a church, the church, all of a sudden the church is in this exuberant worship, exuberant praise, right? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise God. Amen. I could can I can I say this this morning? Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. I appreciate you. I appreciate what God is doing in your lives, in your ministries, um, how we are connected. Everyone, thank you so much. Good morning. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rosalind. Praise God. He does love it because it's the one he gave me. Amen. He'll recognize it. <laughs> <coughs> but I did bring water today. <laughs> Amen. It has vitamins in it. Praise God. All right, so we're talking about stewardship. Amen. We talk mostly talk about stewardship. We talk greetings, my sister. Bless you this morning. Amen. When we talk about stewardship, mostly, most of the time, people we're people are talking about stuff. Amen. Stuff. You know, God wants me to be a good steward over my money. God wants me to be a good steward over my things. He wants me to be a good steward over um, you know, my job so I can get more things. And the truth is stewardship is a mindset. Stewardship is a condition of the heart. Amen. He wants us to be a good steward, first of all, over who he has created us to be, over this right here. And be a good steward over our bodies and our minds and our hearts. Then, amen, as he blesses us with other things, amen, then we should look at those things and say, this is the, the fruit of being a good steward over this. Amen. A healthy body, a healthy, a healthy body is from being a good, a good steward over our dieting. A healthy heart is from being a good steward. Amen. Over what we let others speak into our heart and what we let the Lord speak into our heart. Amen. And our truth and honesty back with him. Amen. A healthy mind same thing. Amen. How we is a healthy heart is also how we interact with others. A healthy mind is how we're pouring in the word, how we're letting the Holy Spirit speak to us. And then we're choosing yes and amen. Amen. Yes and amen. You know, um, one of the things that I think as believers, as young believers, as older believers, we have to constantly be in a position that when we do hear the word, Amen. We hear the word with gladness 
and we it immediately bears fruit downward so that it can bear fruit upward you know there's the parable that Jesus taught and the parable was about the word of God and he says he says this is the parable of all parables and in this particular parable he talks about I need to pull up those parables in my spirit right but um in this particular parable he talks about the the word when it says when the word is sown into the heart of in, into the ground amen into the heart of man he's explaining it to his disciple he said that you know the seed that is that is dropped it's either going to land on stony ground it's going to land on dry ground it's going to land on ground where the enemy can come along and eat it or it's going to land in good ground and we want to constantly be asking uh, asking the lord lord this is the land this is the ground of my heart this is the ground of my mind. This is the ground of my spirit, man. Father, can you, will you please, amen, make this good ground. Amen. Let my heart be a heart of good ground. Let my spirit be a spirit of good ground. Let everything that you say and speak to me, amen, bring forth good fruit in the ground that you have given me. Amen. I'm going to pull up this parable real quick. And it's called the parable of the sower. There it is. It's the first thing popped up. Why? <laughs> Amen. We can find the parable of the sower. It's in Matthew 20. I'm sorry, Matthew 13, 1 through 23. Um, Mark 4, 1 through 20. And also in Luke 8, um, 1 through 15. I do encourage you to read the parable of the sower. It will bless you. Amen. It will transform you. Um, you have, you know, the good, good ground. Amen. That which remains that which is the the stony ground um that which is lacks dedication and depth i would say um the rebellious ground it works on its own priorities <laughs> and then we have you know the ground that just didn't get it <laughs> it just didn't get it it was like okay yeah, i dropped the seed on me and nothing sinks in. <laughs> so we want to make sure that as God gives us, amen, his word, as he speaks his word into our hearts, our minds, our lives, our spirit, our souls, amen, that we can dedicate our heart, our, our, our own stewardship to saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I want to know. Yes, Lord, I want to understand. Yes, Lord, I receive this word that you have given me. And whether I understand it or not, right now i know that you will reveal yourself to me and how i'm supposed to use this word every word that comes from god should come with a yes lord and you know let's look at mark i'm gonna look at mark um for real quick no let's look let's i'm gonna go let's go with luke 8 i think that one will be a little quicker to the point here um Now this is this is this is a whole new brand new direction for this morning, but we're going this way anyway, because that's what the spirit of the Lord dropped in my spirit immediately. <clears throat> and this is when Jesus is preaching to um his mission to the twelve, and he gives them the parable of the sower. And he said, A sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed, um, and some fell by the wayside, which meant the person just didn't get it. All right. Um it says, and then it says, it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it. 1 through 15, 8, 1 through 15. It says, and some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Praise God. Amen. And it says, and some fell among thorns, and it sprang up, and it choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bred forth fruit. even a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, his disciples asked him, um, you know, they inquired as to what could this mean? You know, explain, please. And the graciousness of God, he did. Praise God. And this is what Jesus said to them. Here we go. Let me get to. 
And he said, in ver and I'm in verse number 11, he says um, that they might understand. And so he would open their ears. He says, now the parable is this. Praise God. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. God bless you. Um, he said, now the parable is this. Welcome, my brother. <clears throat> the seed is the word of God. It says, those that fell by the wayside of the, are they that hear, and the devil comes along and takes the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. It says, and they, it says, they are on the... And those that right, those that fell by the wayside, and it says, and they on the rock are they which hear and receive the word with joy, but they have no root for which while they believe, amen, in time temptation, in the time of temptation, they fall away. So when it's time to prove that word, when it's time to show forth that you heard it, not only heard it, but you're going to live by it, you're going to rejoice in it, you're going to make it your own, amen, then they, it's like, oh, that's too much. That's too much. I can't do that. You know, either they just forget, you know. It says, and they which fell among thorns are they which have heard and go forth and are choked out with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring forth no fruit to perfection. Mm. Listen at that. It says this, and they which fell among thorns, it says, they heard the word, they go forth, the word is choked out, and riches and pleasures of this life with the care, I'm sorry, it's choked out with the cares the riches and the pleasures of this life. Now I know that you're familiar with the um the temptation of Christ in the desert, right? What's called the temptation of the Christ. Anyway, it's when it's in Matthew chapter four, and this is when Jesus is being um is goes into the desert and he's tempted of the enemy. And he's tempted with the cares of this life, the riches and and really the pleasures of the life because it says the cares of the life, Jesus hungry. He said, Here, feed yourself. Get that bread. Turn those stones into bread. Jesus says no. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> and he tells them why. He said, "Man shall live not by the you know by not by bread, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God." The next thing he says, he shows him all the riches. He shows him. He takes him up to a high place, and he said, "Jump off. The Lord will do this for you." You know, he says, "This is this is a this these these are this is my world." Look. And he says, what? He says, no. <laughs> he says, I, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. And then the last thing, the last um, temptation of Christ was he takes him up to a high place and he shows all the kingdoms. And he said, if you'll just worship me, then I'll give you everything that you see. And he said, I will worship the Lord thy God and him only will I serve. So when we think about the, the amen, yep, he does tell him, throw off and the angels will catch you. Um, and so the thing is here is that we have to recognize is the enemy is coming after the same things all the time. He's coming after, you know, the pride of life, the, the lust of the heart. Amen. Um, he's coming after three things. He's coming after the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Those three things. So whenever you see like verse number 13, it says, and they, 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 um, and they receive the word with joy. And it had no root. And it says that in verse number 14, it says, and they and it was choked out with what? The cares, riches, and pleasures of this life. And it brought no fruit to perfection. None. Absolutely none. It says, but that those that fell on good ground, they which... Um, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, kept it. It says, and bring forth fruit with patience. Now, listen at this, guys, and I want you to really take these things to heart. As stewards, I was, you know, as stewards, as being good stewards in the kingdom, the thing that we have to be good stewards over are the word that God gives us, that word have I hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against God. Amen. The assignment that he gives us that we won't be like the one who gets choked out, that brings nothing to maturity, 
but because I'm so fascinated by the riches and the cares of this world because you're so fascinated by that but that but you have to be um we have to with patience being bring to maturity the gifting the work the plan and purpose that God has for your life see the th- one thing I I watch in ministers and young ministers you know the minute they see a little bit of success they go crazy <laughs> they're like oh yeah now i'm gonna call myself this and i'm gonna get i'm gonna you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna do this and the one assignment they had was to preach that one sermon and to stay in the word that was the only assignment god gave them or their assignment was to you know to to lead to lead the the prayer wars the prayer warriors their assignment was to teach sunday school their assignment was to be a greeter at the door and they get that much success get one conference under their belt get you know they they did one women's conference and now it's like oh lord and i just look and i think and i and i look and i pray for for those because i love them amen and that you know a part of my assignment is preparing leaders for leadership and um and for proper leadership praise god and so you know i just watch and i say god keep them strong because the wave is coming Amen. You know, the word talks about how when um, in Matthew chapter seven, it talks about how and the wind blew and the floods came. Amen. And because the word was planted on the rock, it stood. But when you're outside of the scope of what God has called and commissioned you to do, when the winds blow and the floods came, the only thing that stands, the only thing that stands is what God called you to do in the first place. And I said, so Lord, when all this fanfare and this hoopla, you know, after they first CD, DVD, they single, you know, <laughs> or their, um, or, you know, after the conference, after all this passes and life becomes back down to that one thing that you called them to do, or, you know, and God gives, he gives us many giftings, but usually it's one thing that he's actually called you to do. I mean, your execution may be one way, but there's one thing that he's called you to do. And when they get back to that one thing where they said yes to the Lord and they surrendered to God in that one thing, then I said, God, let them be satisfied because then you can, he can prosper your fruit because now the one tree that he called you to plant. Amen. It's growing and it's getting bigger and stronger. And you can focus on the thing that he commissioned into your hand. Amen. And then you can begin to see the fruit of that thing because now you're giving it the proper amount of attention. Amen. You're giving it the proper amount of um, of, of prayer the proper amount of studying. Amen. If God calls for you to do some fasting, the proper amount of fasting. Amen. You can give it the 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 surrender the proper amount of attention. So when people ask, you know, or when they want to know, can you come and do this? Can you jump on my bandwagon and do that? Amen. Oh, can you do this, that, or the other? You can always say, This is who I am. This is what I do. Praise God. This is where my area of anointing, if there's any way that I can assist or support you, then I will do that. If the spirit of God leads, of course, but if not stay in your lane, it's good for you. Stay in your lane because it leads to the kingdom. Stay in your lane because it leads you to the place that God called you to be in. Remember yesterday when we talked about the, um, the steward, the good steward, well, actually the good and the bad steward, <laughs> praise God, the one who had, you know, the talents, one who had one, one had five and one had seven. And then when they time came time to return them, you know, one had doubled and quadrupled and tripled and the other one had doubled his and the last one, he just buried his in the ground. And the keeper of the land said, you could have at least, you know, given it to the local bank. And they would have given me, you know, at least the, the usury of it. Let me tell you what that means. I had a couple of conversations about that yesterday regarding, um, well, how does that apply to your giftings? I said, if you're gifted to sing, an example here, I said, and you have that one gift and it's the only gift you have. 
and you're looking go god but i want to do conferences and i want to do concerts and i want you know dvds and i want cds and all of that i said then you should start singing and worshiping at home and then with the gift god gave you take it to your local church amen and as god leads you amen maybe you'll join a group or start a group because this person's a singer um, maybe you'll join a group or start a group and then let God grow your ministry. I mean, but let it start in your local place of ministry, because as you do that, that that's your local blank. But God said, if nothing else, go bless the congregation. You know, <laughs> if nothing else, go sing at the retirement home. If nothing else, go, you know, go sing. You know, there's a new commercial out. Um, Go, go sing at the, the homeless facility. Amen. Offer your gifts there. Go do the one thing. Take the one gift that God has given you and put it to work unto his glory. Because that shows that you're being a good steward over what he gave you. And when you do that, you'll hear God say, now go here. Now go there. And then he brings new people into your space, into your, your place. And by being obedient to what he tells you to do with that one gift, he'll bring people to hear you. He'll bring people to see you. Praise God. Someone will hear, that's the voice I need in my choir. That's the voice I need doing this. That's the voice I need for this song. You know, I'd like to invite that person into the studio and, and listen to see how they sound on this. And then it turns into a worldwide global blessing for people. Amen. And that has happened, can happen, and will continue to happen. Amen. What we must first pursue is the will of God for our lives. And then be good stewards in doing the will of God for our lives. And by doing that, he blesses us exponentially. You know, your one little tree looked like this at one time. You know, it was a little bud that grew up. And the little bud, you know, grew up. And then it had a few little branches on the side. And your few little branches turned into all this. Big fruit, big tree. You know, if we looked at this on the wall with the shadow, it looked like a tree. <laughs> so, <coughs> anyway, y'all forgive my silliness. But you get the point. So, in thinking about our stewardship, amen, praise God, I love that, despise not small beginnings. I had three people say that, <laughs> amen, everybody starts at the same starting line, everybody starts somewhere, amen, and so you've got to start, you've got to start, and in your start, you're moving forward, you will see the glory of the Lord, amen, begin to pour down and shower down on you, and bless you. Amen. But you must do. You must start. And, you know, God's given us many, many gifts. If we look in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and, you know, verses 1 through 10, it tells us, it talks about spiritual gifting. And this isn't just a list of spiritual gifts. This list <coughs> that are out there, you know, this is a list of um, the giftings that God has given to each one of us. Praise God. Spiritual giftings are for two two primary reasons. One, to bless the, the one who's gifted. Amen. It's to bless you. It's to bless the one who has the gift of God in their heart and in their life. It's to bless you. It's, it's a part of your relationship with the Lord. Amen. And then the next thing. Amen. It is for you. It is to for you to bless other believers. Praise God. So in the blessing, in the gifting for you, take a look at. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Thank the Lord. Thank you for joining today. Um, um, first Peter chapter four, verse 10, it says, every man hath received the gift. Even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. He said to every man has been given the whole, the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you, and that's in the body of Christ. If you're a believer, if you've received the gift of God in your life, the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life, amen. And it says, and then he says, even so minister one to another, amen, as good stewards, as those that serve each other. Praise God. And as we serve each other in the kingdom and show each other the love of God, praise the Lord, then. 
you know, we, we are showing forth the glory of God in the land such that hearts, minds, lives, spirits of men and women can be touched and they can be changed. You know, sometimes people don't know that they, they see you, they love you, but what they need to know is that not only do they love, not only do you love them, but that God loves them. And as they see that gifting coming forward through you, then that says, wow, God thinks enough of me to tell her about me, to tell him about me. So often when we think about ministry, you know, sometimes we're sitting there thinking, oh, you know, I can't do this because of me. I can't do that because of me. And God is trying to get past you so that he can get through you a blessing that's going to transform not only you, because now God uses you, but to bless you to bless someone else. Amen. Amen. Now, if we read down to verse 11, it says this, and it says, and if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. And if any man minister, let him do it with the ability to which God giveth. Amen. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. <laughs> to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So the second reason God gives us spiritual gifts, praise God, is so that he can be glorified because he's going to be glorified as he ministers to you and through you. And now the other person is ministered to, and then he can minister through them. And then someone else is ministered to, and he can minister through them to someone else. And you see how that chain just keeps doing this. And it gets longer and longer and longer and longer because God just wants, he wants, he gives us gifts, one, for us, two, to minister to someone else, that chain, right? And then that person has the gifts and now they have the confidence to minister to someone else and then to someone else and then to someone else. And it just keeps going, going, going. And it's all for the glory of God. Amen. It's not all so that we can be seen. It's not all so that we can be heard, but it's all so that God can be experienced and glorified in the hearts of men and women around the world. Praise God. Do your part. Be your link in the chain. Do your part. Be strong in it. Say, no, God told me to receive his spirit, to let him speak through me, to let him you know, minister through me. I'm doing that through singing, praying, writing, amen, speaking, encouraging, exhorting, praise God, loving, whatever your gift, wherever your gifting may lie, amen, you have a responsibility as a steward over that gift to receive it, experience it, share it, amen, and then watch others receive it, experience it, and share it. Praise God. Well, listen, guys, it is um, that time, but I want to thank you all for joining me today. I'll see you back here tomorrow. This week, we're talking about growing in God. Amen. Being found in his image and in his likeness. Praise God. Being transformed all the more. And then on top of that, amen. And in addition to that, along with that, praise God, we're talking about uh, as a part of that, a key part of that, <laughs> we're talking about being a good steward over everything that God gives us as we grow. Amen. Think about this. You send your kids off to school, you give your kids nice clothes, nice ribbons, you know, nice, nice things, nice gadgets. And you send them to school with this and you tell your child when you go into school, take care of your clothes, bring, make sure your gadgets come home with you, take care of your glasses, your pencils, everything. Don't just go to school and say, here, y'all can have it all. But be careful, you know, mom, this is, these are your things. Be a good steward because these are here to help you. Same thing. God is saying to you, be a good steward over the giftings and talents that he's given you because you'll be at a place to share. And when you're there to share, amen, it's to teach others to be a good steward and to show them just like you are. You guys have a great, great day. I'll talk with you tomorrow. God bless. Thank you all for your prayers and encouragement. Amen. For your inboxes. If you'd like to inbox me, you can inbox me on Facebook or you can reach me at DC Baptiste 
at biblicaletv.com. Um, <laughs> Amen. Dot com. And we'll I'll start posting that <coughs> somewhere. Also, remember to like, share, and give hearts. Love you guys. Take care. Who praise him, praise him, praise him. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and sins to bear. Amen. What a privilege to be free. Everything to God in prayer. Okay, why is, oh.